Tac, tac, tac. How does your relation with uh, Puma started? And uh, how do you work with them um, um, to prepare your uh, Olympics? Yeah, well, well, it was actually, it was my f first partner mm -hmm. that I even had coming out of college in the United States. And so, um, so that's always a special feeling in itself. But, um, you know, I mean, as, as far as the, um, I mean, the, the, the side of the collaboration, I mean, for me, it's more of um, the creativity, I guess, comes a little bit more alongside when I was or as if we're talking about like the performance wear and whatnot and what I use to compete and stuff, mm -hmm. that's more of the aesthetic than actually the, the design. And as far as the performance side of it, I think I leave that more up to, to Karsten and Leaf. They're kind of the, the, the mad scientists as far as the, the actual research and innovation to make sure that they, they have the highest performance spike. And I just use whatever that they come up with in my own spike and incorporate it in that. But, uh, other than that, more just that, you know having a close relationship as far as the design and whatnot, and and what I want to jump in and and everything like that. You have your mic. Sure. Uh, okay. I'm by. So uh, you are 24, 25 right now, and like yeah. compete with virtually no competition. Or it is to still uh, train and be motivated to to reach uh, further goals. Yeah, I mean, I think that um, you know when you have competitions like the Olympics, for example, that are coming up this summer, it's pretty easy to find motivation because I mean that's the absolute biggest event as a track fit athlete. It's the pinnacle of our sport. We're the number one, also you know Olympic sport. So you know there's going to be a lot of eyeballs on us. But uh, you know it's what you. It's what you dream of and it's what you, you work hard for because you love those kind of events and that's where you want to be the best version of yourself also there. And, um, you know, for, for me, as far as motivation also, I feel like I just, I want to be the best version of myself. And I think that pole vaulting, even whether you're the best in the world or, you know, you're just getting started, you're, you're always in a competition within yourself and against the bar. And it's not really a sport that's, you know, set up to where you compete against the person on the side of you more than just on the piece of paper you're always competing against the bar and trying to see how much you can get out of yourself on that given day and um so i think for myself it's always just trying to improve upon that and trying to be the uh, better than i was yesterday and just keep on improving in, in every aspect of of being an athlete uh, thank you sorry <laughs> uh, <laughs> so i could stop yeah you want it yeah you're up no. So, uh, no. My name is Hannes from Sweden. Oh, nice okay. to meet you. Yeah, nice. um, so, uh, being a pole vaulter, running and especially speed is, is a cru crucial part in your sport. And you, you, you're one of the fastest, probably the fastest uh, in the world. How does you practice speed in your sport? Yeah, I mean, well, the only way to, to be fast and to run fast is to run fast. And so, I mean, you have to train fast and you have to train, you have to train hard and you have to do sprint training where you're running at with high intensity because I, can, I think that that's the, really the only way to, to get faster is you, you have to be running with a lot of speed, a lot. And so I do a lot of sprint training and I think I, I train a little bit like a sprinter would train with a little bit more gymnastics, pole vault specific type of exercises that's kind of mixed in between it, but... Uh, for the most part, I, I try to train like a sprinter, and the absolute focal point of, of the training is speed and trying to get as fast as I possibly can because I know that that directly translates to higher jumps and more energy and through the takeoff and on the runway. So you, you have any key workouts you, you would share with us? Yeah, I mean, speed. I think for, for me everything is, is quite short. Um, I mean, I, I have, um, you know, the longest I run, I think, is 150s. And, um, you know, but everything's fast. I do sled sled works. I do in and outs where you have the cones every 15 meters somewhere. It's like sprint float, sprint float, and whatnot. And then I have, um, you yeah, have other sprint workouts where it's blocks and, and short accelerations. But I think that the most important thing, I mean, depending on what event and what you do, um, to run fast you just have to you have to be running fast so you need to have really high intensity 
in your sprint training, I think, whenever you're doing it. And I think that's the only way to see improvement as far as in, in your speed. Perfect. And when you're, you're not using your spice, what Puma shoe is your favorite? Um, I would say the the Velocity 3s. That's the one that I've been and on the, the new Velocities. That's probably my favorite as far as when I'm doing the warm-up and I'm just doing like my, my normal my normal routine without the yeah without the sprint spikes on and pull spikes and whatnot so that that's that's what i've been on lately but these these new dv nitro leads they they feel kind of nice this is the first time i've had these on so these these could probably stay get into the rotation i would imagine right now yeah Sick. thank you so much cool. yeah. so i'll ask you i think pole is like a special sport uh for spectators and I don't think maybe a lot of people like watching the sport sometimes realize the the small tiny adjustments that you make throughout like each attempt. Could you kind of like break down like the small things you do and like what you would maybe like tell a spectator to kind of look for when watching uh, your event? Yeah, it is quite complicated. I yeah. guess. I mean, I think it's a, a little bit of it's it's like kind of similar to golf, I guess in a in a way to where you know you you trying to find your numbers you know depending on you're trying to pick what what pole to use where to run from and you're trying to get the numbers right with your coach which is pretty much your caddy and so um you're just trying to pick the right pole for the situation based on how the poles are moving and bending and where to grip up on the pole and then where the run is as far as trying to find a consistent rhythm and whatnot i mean it shouldn't change too much but it it can it can vary a little bit uh depending on the surface, depending on the weather, depending on how you're feeling that day because, you know, you're always different. So just trying to kind of lock in those things and also the depth of the standards. You can change it from zero centimeters from the edge of the box to 80 centimeters. So you're always messing with that too. And that all depends on the speed that you have on the runway and the, the pole that you're using and where you're gripping on it and the stiffness and whatnot. So um, that's basically, I guess, what it is. I mean, and there's yeah. a lot of different things i guess that you can look at from from the jump to determine uh you know determine what you're going to do the next jump as far as uh, what to how to lock in those those numbers for to make sure that everything's right but um it's it's complicated i guess because every day is a fresh day and everything's new so you always have to keep adjusting and, and being go with go with the flow i guess depending on whatever the day is giving you it's very like strategic and calculated yeah I mean, it's yeah, it's quite calculated, but I guess you get kind of used to that whole process when you when you jump a lot. But um, and I mean, I think the most important thing is just um, understanding that every day is new, and that some days they give you something new, and that you know not necessarily what worked yesterday is going to work today. And always being able to adjust and go with the flow, and um, being able to kind of just do whatever's best for the moment rather than trying to. Um, you know, overcomplicate the things.